Did you know that there is a trend going around right now of places you should not take your first date? The 28 places that women will refuse to go to? Yeah. All right, is that the right one? Okay. <laughs> I was going to say AJ cut that so that I could do that all over again, but that was too perfect to be cut. Olive Garden is number five on the list. What? Apparently people don't like unlimited breadsticks. Oh my God, I'm such a for breadsticks. They're so good. We are hoping to start a family soon, but I fear I have crippled him in adulthood as I have always done everything for him in terms of adulting. How do I let go of the reins and allow him to be more involved in our household responsibilities apart from bringing in additional financial support? Just genuinely ask like, what's going on with the mental health? Because like you said, the video games are escapism. If he's doing it for that long and he has nothing else going on in life, he works and plays video games. I also would like to clarify that I know that I always say that video games are escapisms. You're doing it because you are escaping your life. However, I also understand the fun of video games. There was times in my life where I would play Destiny for fucking 10 to 15 hours a day. I understand the hobby of it. And I understand the fun of it. I, his boys are probably online. Like He mm -hmm. probably looks forward to, to drinking a beer and talking shit while playing video games. He's probably fulfilling something in his life that he's otherwise missing. She says he doesn't go out and have any other hobby. Right. So that is his his social setting. And we're back. We're back. Is this episode 48? What are we doing today? This is 48. All right. Episode 48. Welcome, guys. Slumming it today. Peaches is in her Halloween costume. I am. Looking like you belong in the, the movie Grease. Yes, that was the goal. Yeah. I feel very cute. I'm fucking with this outfit. Yeah. Oh, that was super early to drop the F-bomb. Yeah, that's all right. AJ will bleep it. I am very much enjoying this outfit. Yeah, is this going to be a new thing for you? Are you Maybe. about to switch up the Peaches style from librarian to 50s um, housewife? I'm, I'm for that. I'm just saying. I think it'll be an amalgamation of the two. Yeah. Yeah, but I do want to go on a new clothing spree if that's okay with you. Yeah. Did you... <laughs> <laughs> what? you just put your glasses chains on your bear yeah you need to like you got to shorten them i was thinking about getting like a hair tie or something to tie them back there like a twisty tie or something just so that people yeah. can't see it and they hang down the way they're supposed to that's funny do, 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 do. jokes on you i already put the pumpkin in the oven what if i tuck it into his little coat Perfect. It's literally the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what's on the docket for today? I have nothing. You we, got nothing? We, I have a kidney stone. That's the thing. It's right here. It's yeah. I'm going to pee a kidney stone probably in the next 24 hours. It'll suck. I'll baby you through it. Yeah. Rub your back and stuff. Hold L your hair Luckily, for you. the pain is not in the back like it normally is. It's in the front. Yeah. I felt it shift from over here last night to the front, so I know it's it's working its way. At least it's not stuck. Yeah. I think that's what gave you the most pain last time was that it was it wasn't moving. No, it was that it was it dislodged and did a lot of damage in my kidney on its way out is what it was. But anyways, I um I don't have anything. We have so much going on right now that we have like um 45 just dropped. We have 46 and 47 done. This is 48. Uh, we have four more interviews or three more interviews for, for Friday content. We are three episodes backlogged on the garden. Yep. Yeah, we've got a lot. It's We've got a lot happening. Um, we've done a lot of content. And then when we go on vacation, the 22nd through the 27th of November, mm -hmm. we'll have the check-in, your good woman video, and my gentleman video running Dope. that week. So we'll have content that week too. We should revise those. I think we should redo them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I think think that even though our stance hasn't changed, we've evolved. We've evolved, right? Yeah. yeah. We could do that for like a one year anniversary. Yeah, we could. I, I would have to transcribe the content though, because I don't have my original printout of gotcha. the, the men's the gentleman thing. Um we also have uh a possibility of putting more of our content behind Patreon. Mm -hmm. We talked about that a little bit. I think that we need to really like sit down and figure out how much of that we want to do and how that would affect our YouTube money. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think putting more, more work on Patreon, we just got a coffee order. Oh, dope. Um, I think that more, more of the Patreon, um, more content dropping behind the paywall of Patreon 
adds more value to what the patrons are getting. Mm -hmm. um, I want to mm -hmm. start vlogging again, and I think I'm going to start it as we're building the bike on Friday because the new Telerias will be here on on Thursday evening. Okay. Um, and I want us. I want to like vlog Steve and I doing our thing, and then you know vlog us riding and and all of mm -hmm. that shit. So. I definitely want to start vlogging again. I'm probably going to pick up a couple of GoPros so that we can both wear GoPros while we're riding. And that's a good idea. Just to have it, yeah. you know, and we could just put music over it and we don't have to talk over it if we don't want to. Um, although I know that there are people that put microphones inside their helmets so that while they're talking and riding, you can hear them. I think people would enjoy that from us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to see. I don't want people to hear my fat ass breathing while riding. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you insert the music. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I want to figure thing. out a way to listen to music as we're riding. My um, my AirPod kept falling out. Yeah, I think you just need regular headphones, like the good Bose ones that wrap around the inside top piece to oh, hold it in place. Good. That's what I used to ride when I wore my when I uh, rode my Harley. I would never yeah. wear my AirPods. I would tuck my cable down in my shirt and into the ear and into the ear because if I lost an AirPod, I'd have been pissed. But if one of my earbuds That's fell, I would idea. just flop on my shirt and yeah, smack me in the face. We need to do that. I need yeah. to do that. I think that'll help me um, not focus too. I think that was part of my issue with that first ride. I was focusing too much. Nah. I think it's just you getting used to, to being a boy. No, I think I overthink. <laughs> being a tomboy. <laughs> you, you you went down in that, that loose sand. Rough. Yeah, look at my knee. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Getting it. Yeah. Look at that, guys. If you can see it. Oh, I'm sure you can. I it's It pretty, goes down. It's pretty blue. Yeah. It's funny. So I got my knee hurting. My toes still hurt. My shoulder's bothering me. And now I'm having intestinal pain. <laughs> my body's just falling apart. Yeah. I was telling Sean in the gym yesterday that if, if in the event that I go down, like you went down, things are going to break. I went down hard. I'm not bendy like you are. And yeah. like just having my arm go up over my head. If I landed like that, I would probably tear my lat. Rotate, ro rotator cuff, mm -hmm. collarbone, shit's getting broken. Yeah. Because 240 pounds, like hitting the ground is going to be hard. So I think if we're going to be riding like this on a regular basis, that we need to, to really buckle down on the diet. Yes. <laughs> and I found really dope trails in the Everglades. Oh, word. I did that for four hours yesterday or two hours while watching the premiere and then two hours last night while. Yeah. Like not doing shit. Okay. So I, I found some trails. I, I also bought an app on the phone called mm -hmm. All Trails. And they do hiking trails and biking trails and, and all of that four-wheel okay. drive and shit. But because they're electric bikes, mm -hmm. I'm going to fucking ride them on hiking trails. <laughs> I'm like, oh, a 20-mile trail, nine hours, game. Boom. Game on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shit's fun. So. Yeah. Um, we need to go to BJ's. Yeah. Yeah. We, stock stock up. we need to. So they're coming. The guy that's coming to pick up some of the gym equipment that was supposed to be here tonight canceled. He's coming tomorrow instead. Oh, so that's happening. It is. I sold the three pieces. Okay. <coughs> but he's coming tomorrow when that, that piece that's in the garage that doesn't get used is gone. I will buy a deep freezer and then oh. we can just deep freeze. So I, I'll probably order that today when I order. I have a lot of work to do. I have a whole yeah. list of shit that has to get done still that I'm going to do while you go pick up the kids. Um, we created another TikTok. We did. So we have three now. It's the To Be Better podcast, To Be Better Peaches, and then To Be Better Life. Yes. The to Be Better Life is all behind the scenes shit. It's things that I don't want to post on a regular page because it's life stuff. Mm hmm People that follow accounts do so because they want that specific type of content. So for us to be dirt biking or you making pumpkin pie or whatever it is that we're doing, and I want to make a TikTok about it, mm -hmm. it's all going on there. We both have access to it, so you'll be getting videos from both of us. But that is something that you guys can follow on TikTok at To Be Better Life. That is our account. We also, for all of you who like to steal our content, just know that we got some shit in the works for you motherfuckers. Mm. It's coming. <laughs> so much fun. <clears throat> um. What else was there? I also, think, for the fans, no, we are taking care of the spam account. Yeah, we are working on that. We are definitely working on yes. that. Yes. Um, everybody that finds the spam accounts know that we've been told about them. We check on them all the time. Um, we have reached out to TikTok a lot. They mm -hmm. don't give a shit. They don't care. So we have we are stepping it up, and we are, we are now taking other actions to make that shit go away. So, um, I got nothing. You look really handsome today. This is my exhausted face, so I'm glad that you feel that I'm very handsome while I'm exhausted because I am run the fuck down. I want to pamper you. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? Like soak your feet and rub your shoulders, a hot towel for your face. <laughs> massage would be super dope, like an actual massage, like a good two-hour uh, deep tissue, 
like I can't do that. ruin someone's day massage. I can't do that. I need to set the sauna up too. I, I have a lot. We and I, I have taken some downtime. You have. But the problem is, is that downtime is negated with stress from a whole bunch of other shit that we've got going on. So right. I don't know. Um, we we talked at one point about doing another meet and greet with Discord and mm-hmm. the the mm-hmm. mods. I think that we should start looking into cabins for like March or February so that we can do a meetup somewhere other than Florida where there's not work being done and we can hang out in like the woods and, and do hikes and okay. breakfasts and, and like try to figure out that that's also on the thing of list of things that I want to talk about off the okay. podcast. So, and you can leave that in AJ. I don't care if that gets cut or not, but okay. you got anything that you want to talk about before we get into? Oh, I actually do have something. Okay. I actually do have something. Um, it's so awesome to open my phone and see your butt. I love that for you. I love that for me. Um, did you know that there is a trend going around right now of <coughs> dates that you will you should not take or places you should not take your first date? Or, the 28 places that women will refuse to go to? Yeah. Nice. I've heard of that. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, AJ, cut that so that I could do that all over again. But that was too perfect to be cut. Oh, was it? It was. So <laughs> do you want, I mean, I have the list. Do you have things that you want to talk about with this? Because you seem very ready to go. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Let's go down the list. The very first one is Cheesecake Factory. Why? What's the issue with Cheesecake Factory? I don't know. I like cheesecake. I love Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I feel like that's the hop on train. Let's all just fucking hate on this one place to make men's life hard. Yeah. The weight. It's really the only thing I could ever see wrong with the Cheesecake Factory is because there's a long wait. Right, but then that's quality time to talk and right. hang out. Okay. If you're actually really excited to be with the person you're with, I don't see why a long wait would be an issue. Okay, I agree with that. The next one is Applebee's. I actually agree with this one. Um, It depends on what we're doing. If we're trying to get those $1 drinks. Right, well, and that's the only... Snack on some appetizers. That's the only reason why that I could see Applebee's being a thing is because right. it, they have the fucking really cheap buy one, get one drinks or whatever they mm-hmm. are. Um, I dislike Applebee's. Yeah. I used to love it. Loved that shit when I was younger. I can't fucking stand Applebee's now. Mm-hmm. Um, third one is Chili's. These are normal restaurants. Right. Like, Chili's, Texas cheese fries, slaps. Right. I understand that these are not like bougie restaurants. They are chains. But it, like any other chain, you know what you're going to get when you go there. If you go to Chili's and get the Texas loaded fries, mm-hmm. it's going to taste the same at every Chili's because it's the same fucking thing. Yeah. Chipotle. Chipotle. Isn't Chipotle expensive? I mean, I don't know if it's expensive. I don't like Chipotle. I like their tacos. Yeah. I'm I just, feel like people are just too picky nowadays. I, I agree. I, I'm not a big Mexican food person unless it's authentic Mexican food. I don't yeah. like, I just don't like Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm going to go for burritos, I'm going to do like one do of the flats. Well, well, that, I mean, I like that even though it's Americanized too, but like I blue tequila around here, the places that are near us that oh, are authentic yeah. Mexican. Those nachos, nachos locos that we got last night, I ate that entire thing and was so fucking full afterwards, like my belly hurt. It was, mm-hmm. I looked like a, a pregnant woman <laughs> ready to give birth. My gut was so distended yesterday. It was so bad. All right, you're going to have a problem with this one. Olive Garden is number five on the list. What? Apparently people don't like unlimited breadsticks. Oh my God, I'm such a slut for breadsticks. They're so good. Get that Alfredo boat <clears throat> to dip the breadsticks in. Endless soup. No wonder y'all are single. (laughs) All right. This one I 100% agree with. Okay. The movies. You do not take a first date to the movies. Yeah, no, that would be like a a third or fourth date. Right. When you've already had lots of conversations and you just want to spend time being near each other because you remove the ability to have a conversation when you're in the movies. Right. You're side by side. But not talking. Right. Right. Your house is number seven. Ooh, yeah. I want to go to somebody's house for a first date. I agree with that. I agree with that. The only thing that I could see that being an okay scenario is if you have been talking for a while. Like long-term friends. Right. Right. And then they're like, well, why don't you come over? I'll cook you dinner. Like, that's a different scenario than... Meeting on Tinder. Netflix and chill. Right. (laughs) Any fast food chain. For a first date? Yep. I'm, I'm busy as all hell. If you hit me with, hey, babe, meet me at Wendy's, let's go. Yeah. Give me a baked potato. I think that when it comes down to it, the fast food one is because people don't want to. They it's, they view that as bummy. But let's be honest. Not everybody has money. And just because you don't have money doesn't mean that you're not going to be interested in people. Right. And if you can have a conversation in a fucking Wendy's or 
a Dairy Queen, mm -hmm. I don't understand what the problem is. Like right. you are still having quality time, quality conversation, even if the food's not great. This is all screaming gold digger and materialistic to okay. me. Buffalo Wild Wings. Cauliflower wings slap. Yeah, I, I love the jam and jalapeno. Like, that's my shit. Y'all really are picky. But, I, okay, and to be fair, boneless wings are adult chicken nuggets. I know that. I'm a fucking child in an adult's body. I don't like eating things off the bone. It makes me feel like the, I don't know, I'm not I'm not built to be a predator, but it just makes me uncomfortable. Like, the carcass that's funny. being stripped from it. No. Number 10 is wing stop. I don't know what that is. Um, That's obviously just a wing place. I think it's an extension of one of the main franchises. Okay. Um, Red Lobster. What? Don't, don't I got them Cheddar Bay Biscuits? I, they do, and they have Hush Puppies. I, I hate Red Lobster, too. I'm not a big seafood oh, guy. Oh, yeah, I don't eat so, seafood. But if I, if I wanted seafood, I'm, I want sushi. Like, I want good seafood, not Red Lobster seafood. And, and fun fact for all of you who don't know, when you look at a lobster tail and you can see those little hairy things sticking up all the bottom of the tail when it's flipped over, mm -hmm. seeing that makes me sick. Like there's a, it's, I don't want to call it the tryptophobia or whatever it is right. when you see the holes, but seeing, I don't think I've ever seen that. It makes me sick when I stare at it. It makes me queasy. I don't know what it is, but it makes me very uncomfortable and it makes my stomach upset. Before you continue going through this list, if you told me we're going to go to Red Lobster for dinner, I'm literally just eating bread for dinner and I will be the most ecstatic I've been that whole day. Yes. Yeah, Cause you really love bread. Like just no men. There are women out there who will lose their mind over the fact that you're getting them Cheddar Bay biscuits for dinner. <laughs> funny uh i'll wait until you're done looking that up okay <laughs> moving on okay um a buffet a buffet a buffet i i don't think that that i don't see why that would qualify as a place not to go a buffet could be anywhere it could be in a musical yeah i mean it could be right. when, when we went to see um sister act yeah. in, in fort myers jordan's show they mm -hmm. had a buffet there it was amazing right they had three different lines they had a whole dessert lines. section yeah one of them was all dessert yeah, I, I, I guess maybe I'm just simple. Like, I, I want good food. IHOP. IHOP is number 13 on the list. What? It's the, the, the breakfast place, like the House of, of Pancakes. Isn't that IHOP? Yeah. International House of Pancakes. Uh, people will call it trashy. I love IHOP. Um, Waffle House. Stop it. Their hash brown and cheese. Throw a little jalapeno on there. I, I think that, so you know that pancakes are one of the most lucrative items that you can make in a kitchen? Because the cost to make it is so fucking low and the profit mm -hmm. margins are so so high that businesses that make specialty pancakes, they bank yeah. in terms of their like cost to expense or whatever, uh, cost to profit. Denny's, I agree with Denny's. I wouldn't go to Denny's or Waffle House on a first date. <coughs> I wouldn't go to Denny's anyways, though. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm not I'm, a fan I'm, of Denny's. I'm hitting McDonald's over Denny's. Yeah. I feel like Denny's is just a cigarette butt discarded on the ground. <laughs> The gym. For a first date? Yeah. I would do a first date at the gym. Would you? I would, yeah. I could see that getting ugly for people. Unless you're, unless they're both fitness people. Because, like... I mean, yeah, they would definitely have to both be into that. Right. But I would... If you were like, hey, babe, we're going to the gym, it's going to be a date word. First date, though. First date. This is supposed to be first dates, not just dates. I, it could be fun. It could get creative. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm here for that. I don't think that I would put gym on the list. I don't I don't think I would do a gym first date. The yeah. idea of that doesn't work for me. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that for me personally, I don't mm -hmm. I don't know. Number 16 is a church. You don't go to church on a first date. If you're if you're a religious, that is absolutely a good first date. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just skip over that one. Number 17, I totally disagree with. This one should not be on the list. Before you do that, I'm just hung up on seeing you work out. The <laughs> That is definitely a date. Yeah. yeah. First date. Are you kidding me? Let me see you flex your biceps as you pulled out that, that mechanism. <laughs> Starbucks is number 17. I thought coffee dates were a thing. Well, number 18 is coffee dates. Oh, I don't so. know. So they put both. But coffee dates and number 19 is ice cream dates. All three of those should absolutely be first dates. They really should be. You go on a coffee date. There's no expectation afterwards. No. If you go, if you're going, hey, it's I have 30 minute lunch break. Are you mm -hmm. off right now? Can you meet me at the coffee shop? And you guys can sit down and have a 30 minute conversation, drink a cup of coffee and just be friendly and like get to know each other. That's a good fucking date. Like that's a great start to like build a foundation on. I, I strongly disagree with all three of those. 
I feel like the woman who the the women who agree with this list and everything on this list expect for their man to pay for their rent before they live together. Oh, okay. You might not be wrong. I, I don't I don't know who compi- composed the list. I'm not saying every single woman, but that that's what that's <coughs> the kind of vibe that gives yeah, me. Have you I, seen that TikTok n- where that woman goes, "I expect my boyfriend to pay for my rent, to pay for my hair because he wants to look at me and he wants me to look nice, so he needs to fund all of it." I have seen that. That's that vibe. Yeah, I scroll past that stupid <laughs> shit. And it's why I think men have such a hard time being in the dating game right now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to deal with that shit. Um, family functions. I would not take a, a person to a family function on a first date. I think that... Too overwhelming. Yeah, there's too many people there. Too many questions. Like, it, it, fuck that. Mm-hmm. Um, number 21 is a movie night. Netflix, Hulu, etc. That falls into the first come into my house, right? Like, why would that be on the list twice? Well, I'm going to pause you. <coughs> because if they set up, like, a projector on a beach with, like, a sheet and shit, and we were doing that, I would take that as a first date. Okay. Okay, so how about this then? iPhone or an iPad Pro twelve point nine mm-hmm. parked in a parking lot at a beach on the dash, seats reclined, watching Netflix. Date. First date. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So that's negated. That doesn't belong on the list. Uh twenty two. Somewhere that requires a long drive. What? I didn't make it through the whole list, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> really? The that's o- the date, bro. Yeah. The only thing I can think about with a long drive is if the people are not comfortable together because there could be fear where are they taking me, what's going on. Then that you kind shouldn't of shit. be going on a date with that person. I agree. I agree. But I, I, I strongly disagree that that shouldn't be on the list. I love oh. long car rides with you. Long car rides in general for dates are, are dope as long as you're not stuck in traffic. Yeah. If you live in Miami and you're on the inter- interstate, don't do that. That's not ideal. You're both going to be frustrated by the time you get out of the car. Uh, bowling. We can't handle shit talking. Someone better at bowling than you. What's the problem? I, I'm I'm kind of shocked that bowling is still even a thing. Really? I know it's still a thing because every time I go to a bowling alley, the last like 10 years, I think I've gone three times mm-hmm. because of people's birthday parties and shit. Like there are still people in their bowling. So they it's still a thing, but it's it's not something I ever think of. Bowling is the last thing of my list of things that I think that I would want to do. Yeah. Like dead last. Like under getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, nightclubs. Strongly agree with this. I one. do agree with that one. A nightclub should not be anything for a relationship. Yeah. Did you see that TikTok where the guy was like, uh, actually, you know what? I saved that TikTok, so I'm I'm just going to quickly get into it, but I want to talk about it on Sunday. It's a guy who, the girl is like, men just don't want their women going to the club because they're insecure. And then 15, like the next clip is her at the club with two guys, one in front, one in behind, like grabbing her inappropriately and shit while she's taking shots. Yeah. Yep. A hookah bar. A hookah bar. Yep. I don't think I would go to a hookah um, bar for a first date, but I also wouldn't go to a hookah bar, period, because I don't smoke. I don't, I've never been in a hookah bar. I don't know the kind of climate that's at a hookah bar. Yeah. I mean, if it's a bunch of bro dudes taking tokes and passing it, and you're the only chick in there, and you're trying to get intimate conversation with somebody, and you're someone talking about dick in the other aisle. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I've never been to a hookah bar. I'm not a hookah smoker. I don't smoke, period. So Uh, the next one is a bar for just drinks. Why would you not go to a bar for just drinks? I agree, not a nightclub, mm-hmm. but like if you can, I guess maybe I agree with a bar too, not to go to a bar, but like a high end lounge where you can sit down and have a drink and, right. and a private booth and talk. It's That's very different. different, right? So I guess, I guess bar like a, a dive bar, I wouldn't go to. You said meet up for drinks. Have you seen, have you seen that girl who ate like 80 oysters on a date? No. I, th- I don't, maybe it was 47. It might have been 47 oysters. A dude asked her out for drinks. And she was like, well, I'm going to be here anyway, so let's go. And then she ended up ordering a whole bunch of oysters and just recording her food the whole time. Dude didn't even drink his drink. And like halfway through her eating, he excuses himself to use the restroom and he ditched her. Nice. And he stuck her with the bill. He was like, I just asked you for drinks and you you ordered all of that. Right. Love that. Yeah. Fucking that's how you win right there, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, number 27 is Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I I don't know. I would do a Waffle House date. Yeah? I would. Okay, last one is <clears throat> sports event. I don't know why this is on there because there are people who like sports. And if you're both Bronco fans or Chief fans or whatever sport you're into, and I'm like, we're both into this. Right. I got us tickets to go to a monster truck show. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's a sport. You would be into that, though, I right? I would be. Yeah. You could also hit me with that. You're going to take me to like a drum, like a marching band, drum corps competition. I view that as a sport, and yeah. I would 100% be stoked about it. So this is what's wrong with dating culture. Yeah. It's no longer about the intimate conversation. It's really about a level up. It's really about what you can give me. Right. How much money do you have and where can you take me? I hate it. I hate everything about it. It makes me sad. Yeah. There are women out there who would appreciate an Olive Garden date. I'm sure there are. And the you one-on-one would. attention. <laughs> I w- yes. You try to do it with all your girlfriends all the time. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, but there are women out there who would absolutely love that because they're getting the undivided attention of a man that they adore instead of someone sitting on their phone and liking thirst traps and shit. And then the men who want to do that with women have been hurt by so many women like the ones that created that list, don't see a point in it anymore. Yep. Yep. Everyone's shooting themselves in the foot. I agree. Well, do you want to get into some emails? We can do a email. It's one o'clock. We have one hour. What kind of email do we want to do? Um, I'm not in the headspace for a dumpster fire, so let's do like a medium range to high range email. I don't even want to do thank yous. Let's just do like something that we can solve some problems on. And while you look, I'm going to blow my nose real quick. Have I crippled my husband? Hmm. Did you push him downstairs? Because if so, it's possible. Yeah. Tuck and roll, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Knees to chin. <laughs> we do not condone pushing, pushing down people, people downstairs. downstairs. <laughs> no. But if it happens to happen, make sure that you don't record it because that becomes evidence. Correct. Unless you're a witness that's there, then record it because then we get to watch. Because it'll end up on the internet at some point. I'm going to say, well, that... My mind went to a crime scene investigation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, Chris and Peaches. First Hello. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> oh, my mind went to, it's me you're looking for. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I know I can't sing for shit, but I love singing to you. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it makes you laugh. Firstly, I want to thank you for your time. I stumbled onto your YouTube page and quickly binged all of your episodes. I connected with your podcast deeply and the relationship you have with one another. I'm a 24-year-old female and my husband is a 25-year-old male from BC, Canada. We are celebrating our first year of marriage, May 22nd, 2023, and have been together for six years. Yes, we started dating fresh out of high school. For background on us, I moved out at 16 due to personal trauma in my young adult years. However, I managed to finish high school while maintaining a full-time job, owned a car, had my license, and was never behind on any bills. Nice. I'm proud to say I am now a manager on salary with great benefits, bringing in 65K plus a year. Fucking get it. That's dope as fuck, yeah. Yeah, I love that. When I met my now husband... He was living at home rent-free, no car, no license, was behind on his phone bills, and never failed his taxes. Filed his taxes. So, <laughs> I, so I read that as failed his taxes, failed his taxes but in my <laughs> mind. I had to, like, separate it as I was saying it. So she was the responsible one. Right. Okay. He worked as a mental sheet... He worked as a metal sheet fabricator, roofer, and never graduated high school. Okay. He holds the same occupation and has been promoted to foreman. Foreman? Foreman. And is now bringing home 65K plus a year. Okay. So y'all are in a six-figure bracket together. Love good, that. In their 20s. You. That's dope. Right. He obtained mm. his license and was granted a company vehicle. I'm very proud of everything we've accomplished. We now live on acreage on a hobby farm and a four-bedroom rancher in a beautiful neighborhood. Thriving. Gangster. I'm I'm heavily thinking about owning land in Tennessee. Yeah. Like that's been heavy on my mind the last week. We moved out four months into our relationship very early. 
moved out like you guys moved out of both of your parents homes okay we moved out we moved out four months into our relationship very early i paid all his outstanding bills with my savings and did his taxes to ensure we were starting off on the right foot for our new life together i've always been in charge of our finances as he had no experience with paying bills we do have joint accounts I have set up our life insurance, retirement funds, start investments, and have always allocated money into our savings. Whenever my husband wants to make a purchase, he always runs everything by me. While I'm appreciative, I can't help but feel like I am taking away his manhood, or am I more of a mother than a partner? Mm, I don't think this is the case. I think that I think that this is one of those times that this really plays into strong suits. Well, there's more to it. Okay. That, that adds on to why she feels that way. Okay. I clean our home, make our lunches, do our laundry, make our dinners, and do all the yard work, all while maintaining a 40-hour work week. I understand that he works a manual labor job, and I sit in an office behind a computer. In lieu of this, I hold all the household responsibilities. So what does he do? We have tried pink and blue jobs. However, I find that I cannot wait for them to be completed and end up doing them anyways. Well, that's a you problem. I was just going to say that, but I wonder why they're not getting completed. Is this one of those things that, like, the yard needs to be cut or you're going to get an HOA fine or the you live on a ranch? Is the honeydew list outside of the ranch too much for him to do on his own? Is he just not doing it? Like, that's there's a lot of context that needs to be laid out there. And also, what is your, <clears throat> like, timely fashion? Did, is it only 30 minutes has gone by and you're frustrated it's not completed or has months gone by? Right. That matters. Yeah. That matters. I do have OCD. I recognize living with me may be overwhelming as I always need everything to be perfect or to my standard. So that, that is definitely a you problem. Yeah, and that's something that you need to work on maintaining. Mm -hmm. There's therapy for that. There's books, self-help books written by people with OCD and how they've come to be in control of their life versus being controlled by their OCD. No matter the mental illness, it is not your partner's problem to satiate the need of your mental illness. Mm -hmm. While I'm mentally drained, he is physically drained. We are hoping to start a family soon, but I fear I have crippled him in adulthood as I have always done everything for him in terms of adulting. He has given me emotional support, companionship, and has an ability to keep me grounded. He is my best friend. How do I let go of the reins and allow him to be more involved in our household responsibilities apart from bringing in additional financial support? Is that the end of the email? Uh, two more paragraphs. Okay. Can we just get through it? The, well, that scenario, you need to come down that he is doing things. He is He's bringing income into the house. Yeah. And though he might be physically drained, if he has a, a blue jobs and he's doing those jobs just because they're not getting done on your time frame, so what? Right. If, if, you, if you have things that are your jobs... And I need it done. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to be like, hey, you didn't do blah, blah, blah. If I have the moment to just take care of it real quick, we're just going to take care of it real quick and go about my life because it's easier to just do it than to, to worry about it. Right. <clears throat> I don't understand the, the – they're both young still. Mm -hmm. And if she's picked up that role of mother right off rip in their relationship and has done everything for him, she taught him that that's okay. Yeah. But the OCD thing also becomes a problem because – you're not going to ever do something to somebody else's standard. You can do it to the best of your own ability, but it may not meet, meet their needs. And like if she has extreme OCD, mm -hmm. that's just not going to ever work. She's going to have to do it herself to make it the way she wants it to be. Right. I don't know. I think a conversation just needs to happen of what she expects of him to do and like what a timely fashion looks like and not hit him with it right after work. Hit it, you know, have that conversation on a day off or in the morning before you leave. Mm -hmm. And not, not an argument, just a conversation. And be understanding that he has shit going on in life, too. So if it can't be done right away, you got to learn some patience. Yep. Yep. He will spend his downtime playing video games. I have expressed this bothers me, but I do not want to limit his screen time as he has no other hobbies. He does not go out or party. I do not see a drive for self-improvement, and I always feel like he is stagnant in growth. That's a conversation that needs to be had, too. Well, he was that like, way before you guys got together. Right, right. It sounds also to me like he's using video games as escapism versus yeah. whatever's going on. But you're right. That's exactly who he was when she met him. Mm -hmm. 
That's exactly who he was when you met him. He was at home, no ambition, behind on his bills, not having any savings. You Those rose-colored glasses are thick sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But she said that he is her best friend and that they're very happy together. So mm -hmm. this is not something that's going to be a problem to fix. It's just going to be grace and conversation. <clears throat> and it's going to be how you deliver the conversation. Instead of coming across as nagging or trying to control the situation, just be like, hey, I know that you love to play video games and I'm totally okay with you doing it, but you have a honey-do list. Mm -hmm. And you should make sure that honey-do list is knocked out before you go to play video games. If that means you come home right from work and spend 45 minutes knocking out that honey-do list and then showering and sitting down to a video game, like the issue is that he's not helping. It's mm -hmm. not that she's lonely because she hasn't said anything about the relationship being fucked up. Her issues is that she's doing all the work in the house while he plays video games. Right. So the relationship is fine. They just need to have a conversation about time management. Is it time management or is it laziness? It's both. It's both. Well, can somebody not be lazy if that's who they've been their whole life? Yes. Like, how do you have that conversation of, like, I know you were this way when I met you. We, I'm not seeing any growth in you. So how do you approach that? By saying, I love you and you, you make me happier than I've ever been. But there are some things that I feel like our relationship needs work on. Mm -hmm. And these are the areas that I think they need to work on. And here's how I think that we can meet those needs. <clears throat> and then give a grace period to see if things change. And if they don't change, then you have another conversation. Like, look, we talked about this. This air, These areas of our life are a problem for me. I would like you to start trying to correct these things and then make it more about you. Mm -hmm. My workload is too much. I'm getting super stressed out. I'm not, I'm not enjoying my life anymore. Like, I'm starting to become bitter. Whatever. Make it about you. You don't have to shit on them. It's not an attack. I'm not happy. I'm tired. I need help. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> and have those conversations and then give it another grace period. And if nothing happens, then you have a, then you have the talk. Like this isn't what I signed up for. I want a, a teammate and you playing video games all night while I work and clean and do everything that I'm doing is not a teammate. I want to have kids. You're not showing me that you're a man right. capable of raising children. Yeah. You know, those, those conversations need to happen too, but I, I would start, I would start soft. I would also ask, just genuinely ask, like, what's going on with the mental health? Because like you said, the video games are escapism. If he's doing it for that long and he has nothing else going on in life, he works and plays video games. Yeah. There's a deeper dive that should happen. I, I also would like to clarify that I know that I always say that video games are escapisms. Um, it's, and it, it's the root of it. Mm -hmm. You're doing it because you are escaping your life. However, I also understand the fun of video games. There was times in my life where I would play Destiny for fucking 10 to 15 hours a day. I had a PlayStation at my desk at work and I would play fucking PlayStation at work. I gave zero fucks. Mm -hmm. So I, I get it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that game. I loved the grind of it. My friends were on there like it made me happy. But I didn't ever look at that as an escapism. I looked at it as a hobby. And when it was no longer fun for me, I just put the video game down and went back to doing whatever I was doing. So I understand the hobby of it. And I understand the fun of it. I, his boys are probably online. Like he... Mm -hmm. Probably looks forward to, to drinking a beer and talking shit while playing video games. He's probably fulfilling something in his life that he's otherwise missing. She says he doesn't go out and have any other hobbies. Right. So that is his his social setting. I wonder if they have any structure in their life. Like, do you guys have dinner at the same time every night? Do you guys have lunch at the same time? Do you have designated days for things that you do? We are people who thrive on structure yeah, I and need routine. A routine. Damn, do I need a routine. And if he doesn't have that, he's lacking that. That could be part of the problem. Could be. Could be. And, and, and that falls right back into what I was saying, though, about the chores. Right. If he gets off at 4 o'clock and he gets home by 445 and from 445 to 545, he's doing his housework. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then gets in the shower and then goes about dinner and then video games. Chores are getting done. Shower is getting done. Dinner is getting done with mm -hmm. the family and then video games afterwards. That's not a problem for a lot of people. He, they don't have kids yet. So, like, I can see why that would not be an issue. Yeah. As long as you guys aren't going to bed at separate times and, like, the intimacy is still maintained. I get more enjoyment out of my hobbies and the things that I enjoy doing, knowing that I'm doing it after I got a lot of shit accomplished. So do I. Because I don't, I, I have that, um, so I believe procrastination leads to failure. Mm -hmm. And in my brain, if I'm, like, like, when we were in Vegas, I knew how much work we had to do when we got back, and I was dreading it. 
So the whole time that we were there, I was having a hard time really unwinding because I knew how much shit had to get done when we got home. And though I tried to like dump video cards and do all that shit while we were out there because we were trying to vlog a lot, although that didn't ever get used. Um, Even the travel time, I was walking through the airport with fucking GoPro strapped to my chest. Like I was trying to to vlog. I was working the whole time we were gone. So it it sucks. But like right now we're so far ahead that when we went rode the dirt bikes on uh, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, whatever day we went and rode dirt bikes, Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that two and a half hours. Like nothing else in the world existed. We were exploring. I felt like, you know, people walking where no one's ever walked before, even though I, there was clearly a fucking trail there. But right. in my brain, like I'm looking for alligators and like what cool shit. Oh, my God. Look at that old ass picnic table. How the fuck did that get out here? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I was able to actually unwind so that that matters. Having that routine matters and not having a pile of shit behind you waiting on you makes it a whole lot easier to, to get it out of the way. Okay. So you work, get through your shit and then vacation. Last all, paragraph. All work and no play makes Johnny a doll boy or Jack. Jack a doll boy? Jack. It was Jack. We know there's a boy. Yeah, but it was from The Shining. I don't think all work and no boy. play. Here's Johnny. So it's Johnny. Yeah. All work and no play makes Johnny a doll boy. Hmm. That was such a good movie. Guys, if you don't know, you <laughs> should look into the stress that they put that woman through for that movie. She's never, she has never taken another acting. Yeah. Um, job after she lost her hair she got sick like they tortured the shit out of her for that movie she is still mentally not okay because of that it's wild i might cover that on a black rose episode that would be fun yeah he's your typical i don't like to talk about my feelings kind of man my goal would be a stay-at-home mom after we have children i have this set expectation i have had I have set this expectation since before we got married. I do not see the willingness from him to learn how to take over the head of the household. I even went as far as creating a what to do if I die manual for him. Wow. Okay, so is that an OCD thing? Or is that like you truly just fear that this man is not capable of surviving on his own? If it's the latter, why did you marry him? I I agree with that too. If you really don't think he is a capable man, why would you marry him with the hopes of having children? Yeah. <clears throat> that would that would mess me up a little bit. If you came to me with a what to do if I die manual on how to run our life. I mean, of course there's business things right. I would have to have access to, but just regular household shit, I would that would devastate me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That shows me that you think I'm not capable. Yeah. Hmm. What was that? Hmm. Um, because I think about death way more than I should. Okay. Like real shit, I, I kind of obsess over it to an extent. Like I have an unnatural fear or an unhealthy fear of what's going to exist when I'm not here anymore. Not in terms of like the world going on. This can go on with or without me. I don't, you know, that, I'm not, not, you know, stupid. I just, right. for me to not exist anymore. Like my brain has a really hard time going, okay, this is it. Makes you uncomfortable. It does. And I, I freak out over it. And like, I'll see something like somebody will post something on Facebook and like, I'll go down that rabbit hole and it'll depress me. So like, <clears throat> I do worry about how things would play out. Like, and I've thought about that too. Like if I was to, to die in a motorcycle accident or fucking fall off of a cliff, how would you continue the podcast? Like, how would that that look? Would you even continue the podcast? Probably like, not. Right. Your life would change. There would be a whole lot of things that you would have to. Oh, I would lose everything. Well, I mean, I, I mean you wouldn't. No, I would. Like, everything that my life is. Yeah. I, I think that you'd be okay. I think that doing the content creation would, would be something that you would be able to rely on because of the community that we've built. And I think that over time, you would go right back to doing that. But the thought of that is something that I've thought about quite a bit, too. do this to me <laughs> i'm sorry it's not a podcast till pizza's cries i've thought about that once yeah what i would do if you passed away with all of this and um 
I'm not scared of death, but I'm scared of that. Yeah. I would want you to continue doing all of this. Even if it was just a the Peaches show where you started doing a female Joe Rogan type shit where you just interviewed people, but I would absolutely want you to continue doing content creation. And I would. I would do it because I know that's what you would want. And I would continue with the interviews even if I didn't like the person I'm talking to <laughs> because you found them interesting or... Yeah. Not that I don't like the person. I might not find their topic interesting, right. but because I know you would. Sorry. <laughs> Do I have your permission to keep one of your leg bones? I don't give a shit. Can I have you your femur? I'll be dead. I'll take your femur. The right one was broken once. Yeah, that's the one. I don't care how uncomfortable it makes people. I'm going to have it sitting in the chair with me. <laughs> Fashion it into some jewelry. No, it's just going to be my emotional support husband bone. <laughs> All right, that got weird. It's the truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Treat it like the wooden spoon from the African hippie. And just <laughs> <your bone. laughs> That's funny. I love you. I love you too. I'm happy. I, you know, it's one of those things that like <clears throat> people like will um, be retrospective about their life and think about all the shit that they've done and where they're at and how, where they're going and have those things. And like, I've gotten very good about living in the right now because I, I can, I can literally make myself sick with stress and not anxiety, just no, stress, like that. money and, and all of that shit. But if I'm worried about what's happening three months from now, I'm not living in today. And there's that, that uh, the Dalai Lama, I think, once said that um, the past is done, the future isn't here yet, so all you have is the present. And in order to truly have peace, you have to live right now because what was doesn't matter and what's coming doesn't matter. This matters. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I do. I, I fucking try to really live in the right now, which is why I'm so quick when somebody's like, hey, can you, you know, do you have a minute? Like, yeah, I, I can make time. Like, I, I'm not doing anything that's going to change my life right now. Like, you know, wh when I had to go meet with Steve this morning, I was able to drop everything. When I called the lawyer today, I was able to drop everything. It's not, you know, I don't know. I, I have happiness. I have peace that I've never had before. And I, I think a lot of that comes down to the podcast. Because I, I've got to learn a lot. Like, I, I have I've taken in a lot. I've ingested a lot of information over the last year we're 10 months in yeah we have two more months until we have another jammy episode mm -hmm. um the matching jammies i think that yeah yeah I, I we might have to try to get a couple other people to matching jammies with us yeah maybe try to get conservative aunt joe and lauren to come to the studio that would be fun and just get the five of us in fucking christmas jammies. christmas jammies and just bullshit for a little while that would be a cool episode i could make eggnog yeah homemade eggnog that would be cool but yeah, so because of everything that I see and like how miserable people's lives are and how we've had to work through things and like think about them, it changed it's changed my perspective on a lot of shit. My my core stances are still the same. Mm -hmm. But I think the how and the why's have changed and shifted. You know what I mean? So like I don't know. That was way more than I intended to talk about. So let's Okay. Let's get back to the email, please. I will rant. How can I approach this conversation where he's not feeling attacked? The check ins. I am very direct and have not found this tactic to be helpful. I want my husband to be the head of our household, but I have not set him up for success. Your advice would be appreciated. The, how are you direct? Because there's a difference between being direct and being a, a fuckface to somebody. Well, I mean, giving somebody a manual on how to run their life if I die. That's control. That's pretty direct. And that's OCD as fuck. Um, and that, that, that would cause me to be defensive. So... I'd say he probably already feels attacked. Here's a thought too. <clears throat> you see how emotional you got just now when we were talking about what if. Yeah. I wonder if he's somebody that doesn't think about anything like that. And because she does think about things like that and she hit him with that, maybe there was an emotional insecurity there or um, uh, an emotional weakness and he just didn't know how to fucking process it. Mm -hmm. Like that could be a thing. That, that's definitely something to think about. I, I, you know, I keep going back to the OCD thing because she says she has OCD. That is a control. It is a control. So if she's mm -hmm. afraid of letting go and she's creating death manuals in the event that she leaves Earth, like 
that that's that's kind of obsessive as fuck. Like yeah, um, if you haven't sought out any way to reel in the OCD, that would be my first step. It, it wouldn't be about getting his shit together. I would figure out how to reel myself in first, and then it would be the conversation of, "Look, this is what I want in the future. We're already married." This was my expectation before we got married. How can we get to this point? Yeah. I I, I would do that shit in the check-ins. I, I think that in this scenario, the check-ins needs to not be about the relationship, but be about communication. Mm -hmm. Like you need to have, have a, a safe situation where you're asking your partner how they need you to communicate with them and mm -hmm. then not get mad when they tell you. Right. An example would be like, what do I say that causes you to feel defensive? Um, what? We need to do that. Do what? We should create. Hold on. Hold on, motherfucker. I just almost got up. Stop. <laughs> we need to create. We should create a communication check-in list. Okay. You want to do another one? You want to call it? We can do one more. This one is titled, I Desperately Need Your Help Revised. Okay. Hello, Chris and Peaches. I wrote an email a few weeks ago, but I felt like I didn't give enough information for you to read on the podcast. Wanted to get a little more to see if you could help me. I'm going to give as much info as I can, so just bear with me, please. This is not a trauma dump. I just want to give you everything I have to hopefully get help. So I've been with my wife for three years, married for two as of 9-25-2023. Hang on one second. I have, to, I have to do this because of what they just said. Guys, we are not professionals. You, you emailing in to get advice and to get help is solely based off of our life experiences and our opinions. Right. If you think that you need therapy or you think that you need to actually sit down with a professional, we highly recommend that you do that. This is pure opinion based. This mm -hmm. is this is us sharing our life experience and the shit that we've read in books and just trying to to guide you or coach you in a way that like could be beneficial to you. But we're not professionals. I just need I felt I needed to get that. Don't out we there. have that at the beginning of the podcast? We stopped using that a long time ago because people were complaining like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Disclaimer. Well, we should have the text on the screen or something before it starts. We could do that. We could have it, AJ put it in the. Uh. I, maybe we just need to do a really quick, like, do the disclaimer and then speed it up really fast, like they do for like an advertisement. We are not trained professionals, blah, 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 blah. and okay. that'd be the end of it. We'll figure it out. I agree, though. We do need to. I, th I do think we need to go back to having a disclaimer. <clears throat> maybe just start the video with it, mm -hmm. and then put it into the YouTube or the, into the the Spreaker stuff. I yeah. Anyways. Uh, married for two years as of 9 25 2023 and about a month ago she told me how unhappy she is this came as a shock to me because i was under the impression everything was great they just went, got married wait what, what she said 9 25 what 9 25 2023 was her two-year anniversary okay okay i i misheard that <clears throat> i misheard that i thought you said that was their wedding date i was like it's only been a month okay. we've even just saw a fertility doctor and spent a bunch of money to start trying to get pregnant but she told me that she's not even sure she wants to stay married. She feels like I haven't heard her when she's tried to tell me what she's unhappy about because we keep having the same fights over and over again. Now, I will own up to saying that I haven't heard her properly and that is something that I didn't know until she told me recently she doesn't feel heard. And to be honest, it wasn't her that told me. It was a friend who was sitting in on one of our conversations to try to help us to talk and listen. So your communication is not working. Right. This this is one of those things that we've been saying since the beginning. Repeat things back. Is this what you said? Mm -hmm. No, it's not what I said. Okay, then say it again. Change it up so that I can understand you. Yeah. Sometimes you got to deliver the same line 16 fucking times before it gets in. And it's going to get frustrating. <clears throat> Boy, does it get frustrating. Yeah, because like I've said this four times. I don't know how else to say this. Yeah. That's also where the I'm going to be an asshole conversation comes in. Yep. I don't know how else to say this to you, so I'm just going to be a dick right now. And then blah, blah, blah. My wife never told me, I don't feel like you're really listening to me or hearing what I'm saying. She would just shut down, or if I notice a difference in her mood, she would promise it was nothing to do with me or us and just claim she was in a mood. 
In reality, it was us that was the problem she was facing, but was facing it alone because she didn't think anything would change. That's a problem. If anybody has that mindset where you just shut down and go, it's not worth the argument, you are contributing to the ending of your relationship. Yep. Done that. <laughs> I, I was that guy for a very long time. Yeah. It is what it is. It's not going to change. It doesn't matter. There's no even no point in even talking about it anymore. Are you always that person? Or were you like pushed um, to that point? I don't, I don't know. I think that I think everybody's that person to an extent. Mm -hmm. it, it's you know you when you um if you try the same thing over and over again and get the same results, eventually you're going to quit, mm -hmm. or you're going to find a new way to get the different results because you don't want to quit. But when it's out of your control and there are other people involved. Eventually, you're going to feel defeated and not see the point anymore. And then the self-deprecating feelings are going to come in. I'm not worth it. They don't care about me. I'm a piece of shit. Whatever. That's going to then start at that process. And it's because they're not able to communicate. And, mm -hmm. and I'm curious if mm -hmm. the person that was in the room was able to understand what she was saying and he wasn't. And how come they weren't able to go, this is what she's saying right now. Because if they right. were able to understand, maybe he needs that wife to husband translator. Right. I'm also curious if it is a mutual friend or right. is it one of her friends? Yeah, that, that matters too. That does matter because women will jump on a hate train just because that's their girl. That, that not saying anything because you know, <laughs> it's not going to change or she's not going to be hurt as a problem. That's, that's, that's the downfall of a lot of relationships. It is. But if she doesn't feel like she's not being heard and you feel like you have hurt her, the problem isn't that she's not being heard. It's that you didn't realize that you weren't hearing it. Mm -hmm. The issue at that point then comes where back full circle to her and that she was unable to properly articulate herself. Right. You don't marry somebody that you can't talk to. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to be on the same wave wavelength. You have to be able to openly talk about things in order to like work through problems. It's like that in every relationship, not just personal relationships. Mm -hmm. Business relationships are the same way. You mm -hmm. have to be able to talk to your team. That's the difference between a boss and a leader. Barking orders makes you a boss. Leading is a very different process. Yeah. If you find yourself to be that person where you feel like you are articulating your thoughts properly and the person on the receiving end is not understanding and it's a repetitive cycle, take a step back and evaluate the way you're saying it. Yep. It's not a them problem that they can't understand you. This is a two-person solution. So if they are willing to listen to you say this thing over and over and over again in different variations to try to understand, you should be willing to put in the effort to try to find a way for them to understand. <clears throat> Simply saying, I need you to repeat that back to me. Mm -hmm. Repeat back what I said. And, and that's important because what you say and what somebody hears are not going to be the same thing because they could be listening on intent versus literal you know what i mean like got that cognitive bias turned on right yeah that's important back into the email yes the last big fight was on saint patty's day we talked through it and she told me the issues and concerns that she had i was slacking and helping around the house and verbally expressing my love and giving her compliments okay so her love language is mm. acts of service and physical touch uh words of words of affirmation Right. right. Verbally expressing my love. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Words of affirmation. Everything she listed as an issue, I stepped up on and adjusted to be a better husband to her. Then we had a smaller one a few months ago while I was out of town for work because, like a lot of the times when she goes out without me, she promised one thing and did another. She used to do this by saying she'd be home at a certain time and then never followed through with that promise and would ignore my calls and wouldn't let me know what was happening because it always caused a fight. I feel like a married person shouldn't ignore their partner. And if you say you'll be home out of respect and love, you should follow through with that. I agree. Me too. And if you're running behind or stuck in traffic, just communicate. Yeah. Simple phone call. Fuck a text message. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm 15 minutes behind. <clears throat> That's a respect thing. That's not even, that's not control. That's not, mm -hmm. that is simply like, hey, I'm not dead. I know I said I'd be home at five. I'm probably not going to make it there until 530. Yeah. I know that I'm not close enough to the, the house to be there on time. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Even if I can't call you in the moment that I know I'm going to be late, I always call you once the situation is handled. Yeah. 
and I let you know, like, hey, I, I'm so sorry. I'm not supposed to be home in like five minutes. X, Y, Z happened. I'm on the way. Yep. <clears throat> but none of this was ever the case with my wife. She just wouldn't care about being home by the time we talked about. And she would finally message me back after the time came and went and tell me that she lost track of time and is leaving soon. I, I think that there's something going on there. I, I think that there's something happening in this relationship. Let me let me tell you why. Can I go first and yep. see if we're on the same page? Yep, have at it. So people out of the blue just don't decide that they're not happy. Right. So you were blindsided by this. She's been feeling this way for a while. Her being sneaky, knowing now that she's going out, there's a promise time, not meeting that promise. Sounds like backup shit. And while he's out of town at work. Because right. he goes out of town for work. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that she's met somebody. Somebody has started showing her the attention that she got when they first started talking. Mm -hmm. And things are new with this person. And she's feeling like the grass is greener. I, I'm willing. I'm, I obviously can't prove that. And I could right. be dead fucking wrong. But I don't think I am. I with, think there's another person in the picture now. With today's dating climate. I wonder if she was a no. Was this was it the other email where they got married out of high school? That was the last one. Okay. Um, I wonder if she was a serial dater before she got married. Because two to three years is typically when the serial dater gets bored of the person that they're with. They miss the newness of things right. and move on to the next. Did they say how long they were together before they got married? Because they said they were married for two years. Uh, they've been together for three years. Okay. She just wouldn't care about being home by the time we talked about, and she would finally message me back after the time came and went and tell me that she had lost track of time and is leaving soon. Hours would go by, and she still wouldn't be home. And to be clear, I have never had the concern of infidelity, so I don't think it's because she was seeing someone else or anything like that. She said she no longer goes out because she doesn't feel like she can without a fight, and that by me getting upset and holding her to a time, she feels controlled. Babe, if you wanted a single life, you should have stayed single. Right, but she's wrong, and every it's, uh, all of that is wrong. It, if she doesn't go out anymore because she doesn't want to fight, but then doesn't come home, that's technically her going out. That that whole thing just contradicted itself. Yeah. Continue. Yep. I am the money maker of the house. We. Do both work, but I bring in fifteen hundred a week versus her four hundred a week. So the majority of the bills and finances are done by my two jobs. I work seven days a week, but she feels like I control too much of the finances and I stress over money too much where she feels like she can't buy anything for herself. I mean, you can make more than four hundred dollars a week. She absolutely could. If that's the problem. Yeah. And it's just because after all the bills are paid, we don't have anything left over for fun things. We each have fun funds that money goes into, but she buys little things here and there, so it never really builds. I'll try to give everything that I can. I try to give everything that I can, but we just don't have much. We are drowning in credit card debt. We bought our house a year ago and have eaten through our entire savings because the first half of this year, she didn't work more than a couple hours a week at our local gym. So all this year, the only way for me to keep food on the table and our bills paid was to work my two jobs and not have any time off and to use what we had in savings. I'm willing to bet she's fucking around on this dude. This man is running himself into the ground. Yeah. And it is not good enough for her. Seven days a week and two jobs. There's all, And she's barely working. There's a whole lot of fucking free time there. Yeah. Yep. I'm. Oh, man. I'm not going to say that, but. <clears throat> I would still take her wherever she wanted to go and didn't understand why I was so worried because we have the money. But in less than a year, we went from having 10000 in savings to less than $800. Wow. That, that alone is enough to give you a stress. That's a panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to show her that she's my priority since she said she wasn't happy and trying to not be controlling in the way she's expressed. But she is saying it's not making a difference and she isn't sure if it will. Yeah, I think she's moved on. I agree. Um, 
I, I again, I could be wrong. I don't know. The, I don't know the relationship. Even if she hasn't moved on with somebody else, mentally she has She's moved on. Yeah. yeah, I would love to get an email from her side of things. Yeah. And not a response to this podcast, right? Just but her own email written in is what's going on with the relationship. Because you guys responding to the podcast is just to fucking make yourself feel better. Yeah, we don't like, even really read those. Well, no, but like, so right now, if we're like, we want your your woman to write into us, and she listens to the podcast and then rebuttals the podcast. That's not her side of things. That's just defense. Right. It's to make herself look better on the internet. It yeah. doesn't fuck. It doesn't change anything. There's no no truth behind it. I would rather hear her side of what's going on and why she feels the way that, you know. Because there's three sides to a story. Hers, right. his, and the truth. Mm-hmm. But from what he's saying, it sounds to me like like she's checked out or she's already starting to talk to other people. Yeah. She is my priority, and she is the one I want to be with, but I'm all alone in trying to fix this marriage because she says she doesn't have anything left to put into working on it. But she's giving what she does have. That gives me pomegranate energy. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. If I were a man, I would not waste my time on this. Yeah. Well, he's married. So what's going to happen now is the reason everybody, oh, everybody, fuck, every, right. everybody wants to say that men are afraid of marriage. Men are not afraid of marriage. We're not afraid of commitment. We're afraid of divorce. We're afraid of what's going to happen when women get bored and don't want to be in our lives anymore. And this is exactly what's happening. And, She's bored. Yep. And in the event that she, he makes three times the amount of money she does. Mm -hmm. He's going to end up having to pay alimony to a company to um, uh, accommodate her quality of life yeah. for a while. In the event that there's a divorce, hopefully they can fix their bullshit. But I get it. If I were a dude, I would not get married. Yeah. I, no, that would not be on the table for me. Yeah, I, I was I'm, I have been and always mm -hmm. probably will be a big advocate for marriage because I believe in, I believe in what it is. But I understand why men are so afraid of it. It's terrifying. It's not worth it. We read an email where a woman was a, an addict, was using a man for a place to stay, had children with him, built a family, and she was like, I've never been in love with him. Yep. And I'm recognizing I don't want to be here anymore. Yep. She totally used the guy for the entire time. And here he is thinking that he's doing the thing. He's having a family, a woman that he loves. He has two beautiful children. And has no idea that she used him for a place to stay because she was an addict. Yep. She even said last night, 10-8, that it's been one month. And I'm doing everything perfectly and exactly what she wants and needs. But she doesn't feel any better towards me. That she's not in love with me anymore and doesn't know if it's possible to come back. She's not ready to say the D word yet. I want my wife back. And I have definitely changed as a man in the last month by doing my own personal reflection and growth for my shortcomings. But I worry it's too late to bring her back to me. What advice can you two give me to help? I'm trying to find any help I can get. I love your relationship dynamic, and I know she does too. But is it possible to fix something this broken? I'm dedicated to doing whatever it takes. Please read this, and if there's any feedback you have or anything else you need to hear, I can send more. Or do a call, whichever you wish. I, I think it's important to notice a couple things. One, you're, you're not there. <laughs> Right. If you're working seven days a week and you're working two, two jobs, jobs and she's barely working at all, like she's living her best life and you're dying on she's doing it on your dime. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucking dying at work, trying to kill yourself, making sure that she has everything that she needs so that she can go out and play. Yeah. Um, $400 a week is not a lot of money. That, that doesn't even cover our grocery bill. No. Like, I, I why What's are the point you of working? Right. What's the point at that point? Why are you even working? Yeah. Um, I got to be honest, hearing hearing your side of this makes me believe that she's talking to someone else. Something is not right in your home. And if you've if you've made the changes in the last month and she just fell out of love with you, love is a choice. Love is definitely a choice. And sometimes it's not enough. Yeah, there are certainly people, not just women out there looking to use somebody as the next step in their life. Yep. This sucks. Reading that email sucked. Yeah. Also, we have no idea if over the last three years you've done things to hurt her. Right. I mean, that wasn't included. So if you've been an absolute fuck face and have disregarded her feelings, even though you're working so hard to pay the bills and um, provide us 
provide a life for her, if emotionally you're neglecting her, that, that is like the way to a woman's heart is to be her emotional safety. I think we need to have um, you or the wizards email them back and tell them to email, have her email in. Okay. Without, before this hits the internet mm -hmm. so that we have it before she's able to watch the content. Okay. That way we have a, a, her side of the story. I think that would be dope. Um, I know this was a short episode. It was only an hour and 15 minutes long. Do you have anything mm -hmm. that you want to add? Cause you got 10 minutes until you got to pick up the, the kids. No. All right. With that being said, guys, remember you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen and we will see you on the next one. Bye guys.